hello, my name's Carol, this is my channel So Carol, and today I am going to be revealing the Busy Bee Challenge number one result. Now, so I might have to backtrack a bit. This was a challenge that I'm doing together with, let me get this right, One Girl Creates, Sequin Girly Creates, uh, Gemini Stitches, Sewn by Sarah, and so sparkle with Sam. Hope that's right. I hope I've got everybody's names right. But it was uh, started off by I think Christine from Gemini Stitches who had the great idea of doing a challenge, a three month challenge based on the TV programme The Great British Sewing Bee, which we all absolutely love. So the first challenge was a pattern challenge. So we were sent a pattern by somebody else at random I was sent one by Sequin Girly Creates and she uh, sent me this pattern. Now I will say that, I mean, I knew Jen from One Girl Creates but I hadn't seen these other YouTubers, hadn't come across them at all before. So that's been the amazing thing, getting to know some new people out there. But so they didn't know me, I didn't know them, so they had no idea obviously what to send me and what I sew. Anyway, I was sent a pattern by Sequin Girly Creates and it was this Butterick 6733 and it's a blouse. I chose to make View A. Now View A has got, if I can show you the line drawing, it's got these flutter sleeves, buttons down the front, it's got a sort of placket there. Um, I didn't want to make the fixed sleeves because cuff sleeves do annoy me and didn't want to make the belt. I was concerned about the deep V on this uh, sweetheart neckline, so which is why I went for version A, which has a sort of cuff at the top to, to bring it up. So that was the version I went with. I had some beautiful uh, Visco chalet that I'd had in the wardrobe for a long, long, long time, where I stored my fabric. So I started making it. I put lots of it together, and I'm going to include a little bit of film now as to how I got on. Right now, I am really fed up. I was loving this top as I was making it, but as you can see, it is just enormous on me. I haven't done the buttons yet. Um, I've just pinned it together. The only place it isn't enormous is around my hips. Now, honestly, it's just giant. I've clipped my hair up so you can see just how big it is at the back. I have got, to, I didn't realise it came down so far at the back as well. I have got to do some serious work on this. Um, might involve redoing a lot of it. So I'm really fed up because I was really loving sewing this. I loved this detail. I loved just um, the fact that it was raglan and I spent ages doing this binding and the hand sewing all this binding and oh my it's just it's huge this is a 10 I always sew a 10 I think I probably well saying go down to a six two sizes but then I wouldn't have been able to get it around my hips but perhaps maybe if it was sort of this high got a bit more room I've got a lot of work to do on this to make it wearable because it's just giant. I've taken uh, the sleeve off. Um, as you can see at the top of the sleeve you had to make a binding. It doesn't actually sew onto the front of the garment. You only sew it on from the shoulder seams. So you have to make a binding and then slip stitch it down. Now the good thing about this, and I don't know if it'll work, but it is just the size of a piece of elastic. And as it's almost a casing, I'm going to put a bit of elastic into the top of the sleeve. If this works, this will be brilliant because I can tighten it and it should bring the whole top up. That would be a really quick fix. So keep your fingers crossed for me. Now, what do we think? This is only just bringing the elastic in at the shoulders. That has done a remarkable job. You can see I've still got the elastic hanging because I haven't worked out how tight to do it, but that has lifted 
the I'm still conscious about my bra straps, but that has lifted the whole thing up just purely by putting that elastic into the that's fixed the gap at the back because it's hoiked it up. Um, I might have to just uh, bring that in just a little bit, otherwise, there's going to be it's tight here. Um, I could pull out a little bit just under those arms. I can release a bit of the seam allowance there. Um, but I'm going to have to bring just this top bit in a bit. Otherwise, the overlap for the buttons is going to be too off because there's too much here, too little here. Anyway, but yeah, it is, I think, I've, I think I've cracked it just by, oh gosh, if it's that simple, that's amazing because I thought I was going to have to recut everything. Yes, I had to take the sleeves off, but... If I just put, keep that elastic in there, I think that's gonna work. So here she is, the finished item. And if I was on the Great British Sewing Bee, I would have actually been the one crying outside because when it was going wrong, it was going wrong majorly, wasn't it? It looked fine until I put it on and oh my goodness, I thought I'd, I didn't know what I was gonna do. Anyway, the elastic solved it and I've got as you can see a really wearable blouse so I'm really happy. Now if I was Patrick or Esme I would be really examining all the seams and everything else apart from I can see I have a thread still there a tailor tack I haven't taken out. Um, oh got another one up here yeah I'd be in trouble for that but all in all I, I think I did a really good job the buttons, I actually did fabric coloured bu covered buttons to get myself some bonus points and I used a tool that Adam had sent me from Adam Sews. Um, he didn't really use it so he sent it to me and it's the first time I've ever used it making the fabric cover buttons. Normally before you know you cut out that circle and then I've run a little running stitch around the side and pulled it in and gathered it and you know it, it's, it's fun to do but it's a bit of a hassle. But I didn't have to do that with this. I just had the round bit of fabric, slotted the button in, and then sort of put the clamp on top, pressed it. My, I gave it a bit of a knock with my hammer. But it did them beautifully. So I was really happy about that. So yeah, I think that made it just that little bit more special. I will say, as with every pattern I ever do, if I run into trouble with it, I start to get a bit, is this me? or is the pattern slightly wrong? So I go on to patternreview.com and I did, and there are a couple on here about this. A lot of them are saying exactly the same. It is so oversized on the top. Um, the whole pattern is quite oversized. So it wasn't just me, um, and a lot of people have had to make tweaks to it. So I couldn't have gone down a size, so what I did was right, and it's certainly a fix that You've got a slightly more gathered sleeves than, than you should have had, but yeah, it's it's a wearable little blouse. On the back, it was interesting how you built it, making this kind of top placket on top of the fabric. This is a pure fluke, but uh, we've got a lovely bit of kind of, not pattern matching, but kind of pattern blending there. Pure fluke, but to, I'll, I'll say it was, it was skill that actually did that. <laughs> The only thing I would say is the sleeves fall, the flutter sleeves fall slightly strangely um, because of what I've done, but you wouldn't notice at all. Um, and uh, there she is. I'll try her on for you now and then you can see what you think. So here we go. This is Butterig 6733, slightly adapted, but as you can see, it is a really pretty blouse. I wouldn't normally wear it with what I'm wearing, but yeah, I'm really happy with it. And I'll show you the back is is not gaping out like it did before, and it definitely is better higher. Um, you got the flutter sleeves, fall slightly strangely, but I don't think you notice that too much. They were really full sleeves, I have to say. Um, fits nicely on the shoulders. The buttons fit nicely. It's nice and level at the bottom. Uh, yeah, it's it's a beautiful blouse. Fits nicely now. I would wear it. I think if I wore it, I'd be conscious of the fact that I know the sleeves aren't quite what they're meant to be. 
but I think I'm just being picky there because it's a lovely fabric. Um, if you had it over some white trousers or yeah, some navy trousers, it's, it's really pretty. So there we go. That was challenge number one complete for me. Um, I hope I passed um, and I won't be eliminated yet. And now I'm gonna go forward to the Busy Bee challenge number two. Now I'm gonna read you the rules for this one. The challenge number two is normally the transformation challenge. So um, they've set some rules for this one. Uh, so you've got to pick an item from your wardrobe or a charity shop. You've got to refashion it. And this isn't just like a repair, it's like a, a, a refashion. It can be a modified version of the same type of item, i.e. a restyled blouse or entirely different piece of wearable clothing or homeware. Interesting, didn't read, read, read that. And you may use items from your personal stash as long as the main fabric is the refashioned item. Now, so challenge number two. I do hope that, obviously we're doing it between the five of us, but it encourages you to maybe go into your wardrobe and see what you can kind of tweak. Something you're not wearing perhaps uh, that you could tweak slightly. Now, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you my three options. One of them is quite a safe option um, and there are two other dodgy options but I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. So uh, you'll have to stay tuned and maybe wait until the end. On um, the Great British Sewing Bee they never know what they're going to make with them until the very end where the judges come in and then it's a complete surprise. So that's actually how I'm going to play my challenge number two because it actually gives me more time to think about what I'm going to do. So my three options are, this is a skirt my daughter bought years and years ago and uh, wore and it was still hanging in one of her old wardrobes here. It's a funny shaped skirt, it's had sort of sides, it was scooped, sort of half moon at the bottom but side slits at the side. But I never threw it away because I absolutely loved the fabric. The only thing I don't like about the fabric is the feel, it's very polyestery. I think it was uh, like a Primark skirt, but I really liked this fabric. So I've been meaning to turn this into something like a little pair of shorts or something for holiday, and I haven't got around to it in years. So that is my option number one. Option number two, the only trouble with this option is it's gonna mean I might have to buy some fabric, which blows, blows the whole challenge. But I bought this scarf from a charity shop, uh, I think last winter, and I just loved all the embroidery on it. And I thought if I um, had some chambray or something, I could have made it sort of a nice border and used it. But I haven't at the moment, so that might have to discount that option. And this third one is a tiny bit of a cheat, but when we were on holiday last year in Tenerife, uh, I was desperate to bring some fabric home couldn't find a fabric shop we just before we left for the airport I saw some sarongs for sale in the shop opposite and I absolutely loved this fabric it's got blue and it's got kind of a bronzy um, tone on it and the tassel on the bottom so I thought yeah this is almost fabric it's probably about a meter and a half um, so that would be kind of a cheat option if I did use this option but again, whether to make kind of a little pair of shorts or a top in that, um, possible, but I don't know. I don't know if that qualifies. So you'll have to wait and find out. Thanks very much for joining me today and I hope you've enjoyed uh, the Busy Bee reveals. Make sure you go and check out what everybody else made. The pattern I sent to One Girl Creates I really like to make myself, so I'm very excited to see how she got on um, and, and you've got all the others. I will put the links to the channels down below. Thanks again for watching and I do hope you played along at home or maybe with a friend. If not the challenge number one, how about challenge number two? I'll see you again shortly. Bye. Thank you.